Now, let's look at what happens when you make just the bar leave the barrier uh, with the same, but just make it taller. So, if you make it taller, you can almost see that this transmission coefficient for a short barrier looks roughly the same as a transmission coefficient of the higher barrier and yet higher barrier. I mean, there's a little, the modulation for the higher barriers are a little bit deeper, but roughly the frequency is the same. Okay, ballpark. Why is that? Because the dispersion that is underlaying this is a parabolic dispersion. You assume that there's one effective mass, and if you just do one shift up and shift your whole scale up, your propagation constant just shifts up homogeneous too. That means your frequency doesn't change a whole lot. Okay? That has a very strong implication that in an effective mass model, different energies, different bands are treated equivalently. You can just shift it up and down your scale and nothing much changes. That happens to be rather false for real semiconductors. Okay. Here's another way to look at this where you can, here's this transmission coefficient uh, uh, at a six nanometer barrier, slightly turned in, in terms of the energy scale, but what you can do is if you modulate the barrier thickness and look at a particular energy, you can actually see it oscillate which is again an indication that the length of the barrier has an influence on the transmission in an oscillatory way. All right, so the key summary of a single barrier is now that quantum wave functions, number one, can tunnel through barriers, duh, right? We all know about tunneling by now. But that the tunneling is also reduced with barrier height and width in an exponential fashion. Well, the analytical expressions showed that, and you've seen the plots of it. But what's a little bit not so appreciated is that the transmission above the barriers is not unity, and that the two interfaces of the barrier up and the barrier down really modulate the space in which the electrons move, which creates reflections, and these two paths interfere with each other, and that gives you the standing waves, or the strong resonant enhancement above. Okay, If your energy matches that phase condition, you're transmitting very perfectly. If you're not, then you still transmit, but not as strongly. 